Hello there everybody, it is Stuff Designs, and welcome back to another course review video. Today we're going to be taking a look at Embry Hill CC. Uh, this one is done by another one of my subscribers. Uh, just going to check it out, give it some pointers. Uh, just by looking at the picture, it looks like a beautiful little golf course. Uh, I believe he said that this one was originally made in 2K19 and then was uh, revisited here this year. And he uh, edited a bunch of stuff and changed a bunch of stuff around with inspiration from a lot of uh, different uh, design YouTubers uh, like Arctic Fury, me, and a couple others. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at it. And see what tees we or pins we have. We have all the pins, tees. We're using gold tees for the back. Don't see that too often, but it's definitely definitely normal. I feel like most of the time in this game, you usually see blue or black as the back. A lot of times, people will just leave gold out or put gold as a front tee. But nothing wrong with that at all. All right, up and on in here. We're gonna go ahead and fly around a little bit off the bat. First tee shot looks pretty nice, super special. So it looks like we got some big, huge rock cliffs up here. Use some of the uh, logs over there to try to give it a little bit more texture. Use logs down here as well. Just seeing what we can see from the first tee. Got a little village over there or something. All right, so it looks like we've got a little bitty strip of a town. Wow, right on the edge of the map. That's pretty cool. Um, runs on in here. Looks like this is probably our clubhouse area right here. I'm guessing this is 18. Coming back to the clubhouse right here. It could be 9, but I'm guessing it's 18. Uh, it looks like we have got one of the island-type builds on the map. Um... These can usually play pretty nice. Uh, islands are usually one of the easier ones to make look good when you just surround it in water like this. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how I feel about these gigantic rocks. They seem a little bit out of place, but when you're on the ground level, I guess it's not so bad because you really can't tell too much what they are with what they're starting but they they are a little bit too big and don't really seem to like fit in like you think about this where would you see something like this in real life it's just a little bit too too out there and i think you're using it just to kind of cover the horizon and maybe cover some ugly spots where say this water down here meets uh meets the edge of the map but I do think they are a little bit too big. You could you could have done some nice cliff sides out in the open. I just think these are too too large. Uh, look at the rest of the map. Seems like we have pretty basic decoration. It's more or less just tree cover on holes. It looks like you built this area, cleared all the brush and everything, and then started started completely clean. Definitely looks interesting though. Uh, I will say for environment building, probably needs a little bit of work. It is still a cool environment. It just kind of seems random. I mean, the island seems fake. The uh, rocks seem fake. I mean, this isn't something you would see. Just that's something I usually try to keep in mind when I build, is I try to make it as realistic as possible. But let's go ahead and get down here and take a look at it real quick. See what we have. Looks like we have some type of... Secondary surface looks like mulch on the cart path. I'm not exactly sure why, and it's not exactly working well either. See how it's all jagged and weird like that? Might work better in some other areas. No, I still kind of got this jagged look to it. Uh, I do like the little cliffside decorations, the cliff sides are quite nice. Looks like you use some rocks, uh, a lot of the logs, and some type of bush in here to give it some color. And then you scatter some more rocks around. So we have a McKenzie-esque style bunkers out here. You just kind of random lines moving all over the place. We'll kind of see how it goes as we play. There's the first hole. We've got a really, really large landing area. There's not really too much to worry about. You are trying to slam a drive down there, though. You do have to be careful with those two bunkers. Okay. 
Not a bad first hold. Layup area might be a little bit too large, but okay, about nitpicking. Yards to the pin. Looks like we're going to have some flat style greens out here for the most part. I will say, just from looking at this first hole, everything is just flat. Like, you see how there's no ridges on the bunkers, the green's kind of flat, the fairway hill is also kind of flat. It looks like you did come in here with a flatten tool, and we do have a little bit of movement in here, but it, it's almost so little that you really don't even notice it. And if it's so little that you don't notice it, you might as well just not have it in the first place. Probably not the best thing to say, really. You want to have any type of movement, but you know what I mean. The players aren't going to notice a small, small amount of movement in fairway. Almost got it. We'll see. It can become a problem if we keep moving through the course and the course stays this flat in terms of greens, fairways, and bunkers. I would imagine your bunkers are probably going to stay this flat because it was probably just a style you were working with. Like, see how we have a little raised back right here? It would have been nice to kind of see the whole bunker a little bit more raised. But I don't think it's that bad. I don't think it is. The green shapes are getting a little funky. I didn't really like the first shape of that hole number one. And I definitely don't like the shape of this. But does it play? That's the really big question. Because this, obviously, is never going to have a pin. So it's not terrible. You're going to have a pin here. Now, can you make a putt down to this corner? I would say so with the break. Can you make a putt back up to here? Yeah, you might be able to take it off this hill a little bit. I don't particularly love the shape of the green, but I think it does play and it does work. As long as you can get around this corner from putting, uh, then it's usually fine to have that big of a little surround. I uh, will say the river coming out of nowhere is always kind of been a big no for me personally, just because you want to have some sense of this water's actually coming from something. I don't really prefer this. It just kind of seems a little dirty. You see how you got like a little hump here and it's kind of pushing balls into the slope and then... It just it doesn't seem too clean, and then you got this little random funnel right here that's leading out this way. It just needs a little bit more continuity, and same with this whole area. I mean, while you do have a knoll here that will allow putts to bring back in here, the continuity seems a little off. Like, you can't use any of this part of the green for flags, any of this part of the green. You have a pins here in this little kind of spot, but that means like 70% of this side of the green is unpinnable. And I'd say about 50% of this side is unpinnable. Which is not always bad. It's just there doesn't really seem to be a lot of rhyme or reason to these breaks. They do have reason. They just kind of feel out of place. They don't feel like they really belong. Can we get a water ball? Yeah, I forgot to look at the wind. I think that's what that was. I'm dead from over here, chipping down that down slope. All right, for the bogey. Not bad by any means. Uh, I feel like this is probably going to be one of those courses where I kind of have to nitpick a bit. It's definitely not a bad course. There are some obvious things, like as I said, this rock is just out of place. I think it's way too big. Now that I'm down here on the course, I can definitely say this is this should not be there. <laughs> In terms of the hole, we've got some fairway movements going on here. I like that. Now, how well are they playing? This is, hill's going to kick you down towards this bunker, which is nice. Make it just over this. You'll kind of get pulled down into here. Not super well, but it does work a little bit. You like the little knolls right here. And it looks like if you land right on top of this, you can get bouncing on down. So I do like this fairway movement here. I think it's interesting. Bunker placements are nice. Now, in terms of how far you can hit the ball, I think there are uh, players who can just hit it past all of this and not even have to worry. I'm not one of those players, since I have the uh, woodsman archetype. I do have, like how we have the uh, 
light rough that just runs into the green like this. It's a nice way of doing things. I've never personally done it like it, like this, or had this big of a like width, but I think it's good. Let's try to just muscle one up there. A little bit too far. Here's the green. I don't like this knoll right here. I think just a general movement in one direction on this whole plateau would have been fine. And I don't really like this back area because I feel like it'd be nice to have a pin over here, but it doesn't really think... I don't think you should have one over here with how much movement's going on. We'll chip in to make up with the uh, for the water shot. John, I do not need to see a replay of every four yard chip shot I get. Okay, sitting at one over par. Oh, I like this. I like this little raise right here. How you're hitting up and do a blind shot, and I like these rocks kind of forming around. I still don't like these big old rocks though. I think this is just too much. We have little bunkers. Ah, oh, I didn't even see those. They, but you can see them from the T. That is nice. I do think making this first one a little bit more visible would be nice, but I do like being able to see those because that, that's always a worry with blind shots is am I going to be able to see the bunkers? I like this fairway. Would I like to see a little bit more movement right to left in it just to kind of help carry players around this corner, but I think it plays pretty nice. Cliff side feels good. It's not perfect. I think you need a little bit of foliage on these cliff sides to kind of decorate it a little bit more. Kind of how you got it. Where was that? Kind of, kind of how you got this. This is a little bit too much foliage of one type. Uh, when you're doing foliage, you want to add in a few different colors to make it feel a little bit more natural. And also, this brown you kind of chose is really hard to see. You really can't see it that well. You want to have some different colors in there. Also with the fairway running into the green, you see how you've got this really sharp angle right here. Uh, run your fairway up like this and have it come in smoothly into the green's edge. When you have it come smoothly into both the green's edges, it makes this look a lot better instead of just having fairway just run straight into the green kind of abruptly like that. Again, this green like it i never like uh having slopes like this off of bunkers because you got to think people are going to end up in this and chipping out of this chipping onto a down slope and basically every direction from this bunker is just not fun like are you going to be able to get a ball to stop by this pin probably not with all this movement now, that's one thing you need to keep in mind uh you want to make sure your players can get up and down unless you're being really really aggressive with your strategies you want to have a player be able to get up and down from all angles of the green is kind of a it's a good rule of thumb to make good courses because it can be very frustrating when you end up missing a green by five yards and then all of a sudden there's no chance of getting a two putt or a new uh, a par basically all right let's see uh i don't like this being right here just because it's in front of the tee box i would have it off the side a little bit tree is a little too close to tea you would never have a tree that close to a tea box in real life but it's also nitpicking the video game i do like the affordable par four i feel like the green's a little too flat and too easy for a drivable par four because i mean with it being this flat and easy i can lay out out to here and get such an easy up and down for birdie i'm gonna go for it of course and this is kind of what i was afraid of you didn't really put a lot of time into shaping your bunkers you see how flat these are how it almost runs dead smooth with the ground up here it just doesn't look the best you want to have a little bit of depth to your bunkers you want to have a flat bottom with a wall kind of raising up uh, when you have just these bunkers that you just place into the environment they kind of take the shape of the environment with a little bit of a downwards like they kind of depress into the ground like a half a foot or so but it's not enough to really make it look like a bunker. A bunker 
there's like a hole a lot of the times. It's usually not a flat thing like this, unless you're talking about a waste bunker. Waste bunkers are usually giant. Uh, so I would deepen the bunkers and raise the back walls up to kind of give you uh, a more, a larger face with a flat bottom. That's kind of what you want. Because like with this, like say I land right here, I'm probably rolling all the way down into here. When it would have been nice to have this bunker have flat bottom to where I could sit up in here. Say if I hit into this wall, it'll roll and it'll settle down into here. With just this being the way it is, it just doesn't look real and it looks unprofessional. And I guess I really haven't spent a lot of time looking at the bunkers in this course because I've been looking at other things. But a lot of these bunkers, while I do like the shaping of them, it is nice to have this type of shaping. I think you just didn't spend any time actually raising or lowering anything. Actually, like I, I enjoy the shapes you made. I just think you should have done some actual terrain shaping, like raising and lowering the ground around these things. It kind of just feels like you put them here and then just kind of forgot about them. Okay, we got a lot of wind. I do like this hole though. I like the mound green like this. The bunkers are nice and visible. I would have split this bunker in two though. I feel like this bunker is a little too big visually from the T. I would have liked to see two separate ones here. But either way, let's go ahead and smack it on up there. See if we can get lucky, land right in this heavy rough. Take off some of that speed. Not too bad. Really hard to get it to sit that quick on the screen. Uh, screen's a little flat, but flat's better than too much movement. Nice little raised bunkers. I do like the visuals of the course. I just feel like strategically it's not there. Like this hole is just hit it down the middle and hit it onto the green. There's not really a lot of strategic thought in this hole. I mean, I guess you could technically get a little bit higher up here than down here. But I don't know. Very easy hole here. That's looking nice off the tee. Last hole is also pretty easy. Do you like the little low over there? I just feel like this fairway is too wide. Uh, the green is... Uh, it's not that bad. Uh, it's not my favorite, for sure, but I think it does work. I don't think there's anything inherently wrong about it. I just, these aren't the contours or the shape I would have used. Again, I don't like these greens where you can't putt from year to year, where you have to chip. That's just always a no-go for me. But I know it is something that a lot of architects like and enjoy. If I'm going to have a green like this, I'm going to have it puttable to where you can get around the corner. Because just from working in maintenance departments for a while, uh, I know how much of a pain it can be to have to fix chip marks out of a green because somebody thinks they can be Tiger Woods. Alright, three six. First start of the course was nice. It's a little, little funny. I'm not exactly sure why you would want to park a boat on that island or have a bridge there, but it's still kind of cool. Uh... I don't like this green again. I don't like these. I don't. I just don't like these greens like this. I don't. I'll try to keep myself from constantly saying it, but I don't like these greens like this. The contours just seem a little weird here. I mean, you've got a pin here. You might have a pin here, a pin here, and a pin here. Front area. It's okay because it's a shorter hole, but I don't like hitting into a downslope into another downslope. Uh, you got leaves trickling into your bunker that just looks a little dirty. We haven't had any bunkers with stuff in them yet, so I wouldn't start it now. Uh, I just don't really like this green, how it's set up to be hitting into. It feels like you have to land a ball way too exact on some of these spots to get it to stop by a flag. You might stand a chance with this pin, but that's about it. Otherwise, it's like you have to land it right here to get it to stop before it rolls off or down or whatever.
really is a beautiful hole, though. It is nice. I like the visuals from the tee. Well, unfortunate. That's uh, going to get counted as a missed stream. Oh, I'm on the rocks. Okay, here's our second shot. You're on the Busy looking at the hole. Dang, that thing came out funky. Again, this is the problem with uh, having a downslope coming out of a bunker. Okay, let's grab a boat. I chipped out onto this downslope and it just took my ball all the way down here. There's no way to get my ball close to the hole to get it up and down. It's going right by the hole. Four feet left. Only one over par currently. All right. Heads up. We got a headwind to deal with. I feel like you, you had a tee box here for a second, or you flattened the ground for it. You just didn't do anything with it. I was kind of curious about the other tee boxes as well. So they're all circle tee boxes, which isn't the worst. I don't. I like to have some creativeness in my shapes, but it's not the worst. This hole. I like the fairway layout a lot. I do. I like these bunkers, how they're placed. You got two and then two, and they're both like on a diagonal line like this, creating kind of a funnel for this fairway. And then you've got a very larger layup area that doesn't allow you to progress super close to the hole. Now, which one's better into the green? I guess it kind of depends on your pin position. But I like this hole. I don't actually, I want to go for the funnel. That's a lot more interesting. I'm not going to be able to make it too far down it because of the wind, but. Yeah, I like this hole a lot. Um, interested to see how it plays without eight miles per hour wind in my face, but setting up with an elevated green. Very elevated green. I didn't mind the shape, but the contours are really throwing me off. I just don't like the internal contours of the screen at all. You just kind of have slopes kind of heading all over the place. This one kind of makes sense. This one kind of makes sense. But for the size of the green and the shape, you've got almost two tiny greens tacked onto each other like this. And again, I don't like these not being able to putt from them. Stop saying that, but I don't like it. Yeah, I would I would just completely redo the shape of the screen, honestly. I would have something more aligned along of what my cursor is kind of following right now. Instead of having this big old outcrop over here, I don't think you need this. And I would re-flatten everything and just try to do some regular tiers. Uh, a lot of your greens just kind of seem all over the place. Look at some professional greens from some really good courses like the National uh quail hollow some places like that some really top tier courses that the pros go play at look at how their green contours are set up how they have tiers in certain areas why they have slopes going certain ways is this slope moving right to left helping that further t shot or that further iron shot or the shorter uh, layup shot there's a lot of little things you need to think about when you're laying out these greens and just coming in here with a flatten tool and just kind of Oh, flatten this, flatten this, flatten this, flatten this. Does it look good from, from the fairway? Yeah, it looks good from the fairway. And then you just kind of have some weird slopes all over the place that don't really make a lot of sense. And this hole, I think, also could use a little bit of decoration. I've seen this kind of on the course. We have just these big areas with just nothing in them around greens, which get a little bit dull after a while. You kind of kind of start to get bored because you're just seeing the same empty fields over and over and over. Okay, here's our third shot. Yeah, but I don't I don't like this green either. And it's not that the shapes are super bad, it's that the internal contours are like throwing me off really hard. Very beautiful little tee shot. I think this is our picture hole. Definitely is. I like it. I like the big cliff you did. It's a beautiful little thing for number nine out here. Uh, the trees are all the same height and all the same exact type of tree, which is something you do need to avoid when you are placing trees. Uh, you want to be using different types to kind of make it look like an actual forest, not like a manually planted thing. Um, I 
do really like this little tee shot. Now, you have some of these mounded back bunkers, but again, you see how these are kind of like, this is almost like a, a mound right here in the bunker. It's like a high point. You want to have the lows in the bunkers to kind of create that flat bottom and then the walls. I'll say it again. You want to have flat bottoms and somewhere between 40 to 60 degree walls on all the bunkers, and that's for the sand right here. Uh, it allows uh, your balls, when they land into one of these lips or on the edge of the bunker, it'll roll all the way down to the bottom into the flat spot. And that's where the difficulty of bunkers comes in because then you're in a low having to hit up over a high spot. And usually that keeps you from hitting a longer club on a lot of those shots. Instead, when you have stuff like this, it just seems unprofessional. I mean, you think about it, what's going to happen when a, like this gets rained in in real life? I mean, this whole bunker is getting washed out of the bunker. I mean, there's the sand's not staying in this thing. It's all moving down to here. And that's, that's part of the reason why real bunkers are the way they are, is they have these flat bottoms so that when it rains, that bunker sand isn't going all over the course. It's all gathering in the bottom when it does wash out. I mean, this one's not as bad. This one kind of has, it's it's a little bit better. Like, you can see how it's kind of got a flat bottom and it's kind of got a bunker wall. I mean, that's nowhere near as bad as some of these are. I do really, really enjoy your bunker shapes, though. Your bunker shapes are really nice. The bunker shapes are very interesting, and this is a style of bunker I actually wish I could do, but I haven't really been able to perfect yet. Just these little jagged edges can be difficult. So this is a really long par four. Again, I don't like how these fairways just kind of run into the green at like a, I guess a 90 degree angle right there. You're not going to see too many 90 degree angles like that on golf courses. Uh, green, mind it. It's not the, or I guess green. I'm thinking about the green location. It's not. I don't mind it. I, I don't mind it being in this little outcrop here. It's not the best location. Again, though, I don't like the green contours. I mean, this is a tiny little tier, tiny little spot, maybe a tiny little spot here and tiny little spot here. This is just getting a little bit too micro for my liking. And in terms of putting, I think you can make it around this corner from either spot. It's just you're not going to be able to get it very close to the flag. Again, though, I don't like the green shape. Just, just some like I've played a lot of uh, courses in this little series, but this has got to be the one with just the wildest green shapes. These these greens are they look like some uh, some art, some modern art. Just the green shapes are all over the place, and I feel like there hasn't been a green I've come across yet that doesn't have one of those. You can't putt from here to here. Almost every green has had something like that. Best of luck here on this par five. All right, par five. Starting very close to the fairway here. What was that? 130 yards out. I think a drive would have been a lot better landing right here instead of down here. Getting players to kind of contend with this, and I think playing off of this slope to try to get around this bunker would have been really fun. I think you back this uh, this T up or up. Ugh, wow. Ugh. Back this T up like 40, 50 yards to where your drivers are landing right about where my my cursor is right now. Because I think having to contend with this and then even with the power hitters, if you can get it over, having to worry about this and then also having to play off of this slope and the wind's in your face, having to lay up, I, I think it makes it a lot more interesting than just smack your driver into what uh, you you effectively made this hole this one piece of fairway from the tee for anybody who's going to play this game all of this that you put work into and design back here means nothing anymore because everybody's driver is going to be landing in this fairway there's no circumstance where somebody's not going to take a driver and hit it into this little section of fairway up here uh, and that's one thing you have to be careful of when you are designing a hole you can put a lot of work, a lot of time and effort into, say, all of this area up here, and then it's never played because everybody's drive is landing past all of that or before all of that. If you are going to spend a lot of time designing an area and making it look really cool and all this stuff, have it be playable.
you don't have to if it's just a visual thing, but kind of get what I'm saying. I do really like the view though, the two bunkers, third bunker here, and you can kind of see the green poking his head around. This one might be gettable into. Uh, layup area is massive, but it's not terrible. And I managed to not end up in it. <laughs> Green. I don't hate it. Don't love it, though. I don't really like this little spot right here, how all this is just kind of running you into the uh, rough. But other than that, not the worst. I don't like this little shape right here again. Just kind of a weird shape that I just don't like. I don't like this curve. I wish it would have kind of just continued around. But other than that, I think it's a fine little hole. Dang. And I'll end up right in that little spot, won't I? All right, this is your fourth shot. And this one missed a par. This one's a missed par. Okay, we're moving. We're moving. All right, moving on here. Looks like we got a par three. Ooh, we got corralled out of nowhere. Where are those guys at? Oh, there's the cows cheering for me over there. Where did you put the crowd? I know you can only hear that cheering when there's a crowd nearby, but I don't see a crowd anywhere. Maybe it was the cows. Maybe the cows are cheering for me. That'd be pretty funny, actually, if they added that as an Easter egg. Cows randomly cheer. Got about the wind. I, I like the look from the uh, P. I like the look a lot. Again, though, I don't like this. Uh, when you're chipping out of the bunkers, again, you're chipping into a downslope. And when you're coming from the T, you're hitting into a downslope. I just don't like that in general. And then it looks like this is dead flat, this whole area. Looks like this is mainly all dead flat. It might have a smidgen of movement. But you definitely don't want to have any dead flat areas. You want to have movement on every part of your green. Even if it's very, very, very little, you want to have movement. And you want to have consistent movement. When you get it down to this little bit, you see how these lines are barely moving. You can get phantom break where it looks like it's going to break for the player, but it doesn't. And that can be one of the most frustrating things in the game. So you want to make sure there's break over no break. Got another drivable par four. I would like to see some fairway back here to kind of have a fallback area. People go long. Uh, I don't mind the green shape again. I don't like this little red spot right here. But overall, I don't mind the green. It's not too bad. Bunkers definitely need some work. You can see just all the inconsistencies with the height and how it's all kind of just moving weird. Again, like you can see how this part's low and then it runs up a wall and then down and then back around. It's just weird, weird bunker sculpting. Massive, massive layup area. Again, I don't mind that you use the trees. The trees aren't bad. Uh, it's just some variety in terms of tree shape and size and stuff. I can tell that these are all different trees, but they are all the same size and it doesn't really feel like it's a real... Like they're real trees, because like they were manually planted there. <laughs> That's cool. I like that little little exit you did. In terms of your like sculpting rivers and decorating rivers, fucking like A tier. I, I I like the rivers you did. They're very nice. And I might just be in them. That thing way left. Shot on the 12th. Switch over to that flop shot. A little long. Yeah, I don't mind this green shape or the contours. I think this top tier might be a little bit too flat. No, it's got movement. 
Alright, coming on down to 13. Ooh. Okay. I would really like this until I saw that this is all path. Make this sand or something else. Making that all path is just not the play. Also, to get rid of... You see how you got these little edges right here? To get rid of this... Uh, I guess you can't because this is probably the base water level. Uh, watch my video on bleeding bunkers. Uh, you can get uh, these edges to bleed down into the water. I show people how to do it with bunkers, but you can do it with any surface. Uh, it just gets rid of these really annoying little edges out here. I do think there is some opportunity on this hole, too. If the wind is at your back, you could probably land in here and maybe get some bounces up. Uh, otherwise, I do really like this area. I just don't like that it's path down here. Uh, the hole design, I actually really like as well. You have it all marked as OB down there, which is nice. Yeah, I like the hole design. The hole design is nice. Got this nice little shorter layup area that gives you a really short shot in, or you can contend with these bunkers over here. I think these bunkers might be a little bit too far away. Yeah, they are a little bit too far away from the T. They would need to be kind of more right in this area. You would have to bump this little outcrop down to here. But I want to go for the little layup area. This is this is the type of design I like where you have to make decisions on each hole. Do I want to go this way? Do I want to do this? Do I want to hit this club? That's, that's what you want to make your players think. You don't want to just... Have your player handed a driver on every tee shot. Just smack it down the middle. I like the green area. And this is just a beautiful little view with these rocks. Rocks in the back. Little bunkers stacked like this. I really like these bunkers stacked. Uh, green is... It's okay. It works. It works. I don't like it, but it plays as a green and it'll work. Uh, really don't like this slope right here, just because chipping out of this bunker. And I think it's a little too close to your pin. But yeah, this green's just a little too flat. Again, just the contours. I mean, you do have a lot of contours. It's just they don't really make a lot of sense. I mean, they just kind of go in this direction, that direction. I mean, you might have one or two that make sense, but doesn't really feel like your greens really work that well. Again, I, I would just recommend looking at some videos or some courses. Some really, really nice high tier courses the pros play on. Taking some of their green styles and modifying them to be your own. That's one of the best things uh, about being a designer is you have so much inspiration out there. So many things you can take inspiration from and change them around to be your own. You can see some of the best greens in the world and switch around one bunker and it is now your own. You got the inspiration from everything in this world in terms of creativity comes from inspiration of some kind. And that's something I really, really enjoy about design is I can see a hole like this. I can be like, wow, I love these bunkers and I love this bunker on the inside. And I can take just that concept and build an entire hole of my own. Okay, let's see what we got here. I don't really like this big open area right here. It just feels like wasted space. I feel like with this, eh, this is part five, but I guess you don't really want people cutting it around this corner. But at the same time, like, I might just do it because this is going to get me really close to the hole. Let's see. That little B. Yeah, if I go down here, I'm 180 out. Or I could be 220 out. So it's like if I cut this corner and just go into this heavy rough, I'm realistically getting a, a lot more distance out. Which I, of course, I would hit it fast like I've been doing all day today. But. For part five overall, though, I like this green. I do. I like this one a lot. You have two tiers. 
Uh, this one, this might need a little bit more break down here. There's not really a lot going on. But I like how you have one consistent break going this way in the back. Uh, and you got just this little, little bowl in the front. Bunkers are going to be easy to chip out of. Maybe knock this down a little bit. Other than that, I really like this green. I do see how you get this all running off down here, pushing balls down here. I would have like a little fairway cup back here to kind of catch those balls running long. Also, that's one thing I wanted to mention. I don't mention this too often, but I find a lot of times courses and course designers will just have this fairway runs into green and then green is the dead end of the hole. There's nothing past the green. Don't be afraid to add some little fairways like onto the back area approach areas to allow those balls to run off the green. Somebody who does miss long ends up in this little nice outcove of fairway that's got these really interesting contours and raises in them. You don't just have to have, like, it's nice that you have these little bumps here, but for example, if this whole area was flat, you don't have to have just whole flat areas around your green. You can add fairways that run down and then all these little coves to catch the shots to basically create a chip shot. like. When you have a bunker down here, you're creating a chip shot for somebody to have to get out of. You can do the same when you add a fairway over here with a low in it. You can be like, all right, this spot down here, that's going to be a low. People are going to end up down here. I can create a chip shot to my different pins from this little spot down here. And then this one from over here. And that's just one thing you want to kind of keep in mind is you don't have to just have green and bunkers. You can have green bunkers and fairway all around it to make the hole really, really interesting, really tie the whole thing together. Let's go ahead and get that on. Wow, I'm actually surprised that's so straight. I wasn't really paying too much attention. That might have been some phantom break right there. It looked like it was breaking, but it didn't at all. Uh, I like the idea of the waterfall. Again, I just don't like that the water's coming from nothing. Uh, I would have liked to maybe see a river run down through here and then feed off into this or something. Green shape. God, dude, I just, I want to put a bunker right here so bad for you. I think a bunker right there would really, really tie this hole together. Like, this spot is just crying out for a bunker. Uh, I don't like the green shape that much because you've got this nice little curl that'll bring stuff around. I do think this is a little too aggressive, though, because you've got this entire area, all of this, that is not going to hold a ball. And that's a lot. If I'm down here, I'm going to have to smash a shot just to get it up here. Uh, again, tiny, tiny flat area for your pin, again. Uh, and it doesn't really seem like we have too many more flat areas up through here. I really like this little spot up here. A lot of your little decorations are nice. nice swing. Enjoy them. I continue to forget about the wind. I, I just forget there is wind on in general, and I just hit my shots. Oh, yeah. This is what I was also afraid of. This is what I was saying about, like, you want to make sure you can always get up and down from spots. Because I was above the flag here, there was no way of me getting any shot to stop because I'm chipping into a downslope, into another downslope, and then off the front of the green. So that's something you want to keep in mind uh, as you're designing. Like, as I was saying, like, you see you get this nice little runoff area up here. It's like, it makes sense for people to miss up here and go long into this. But when people go long into the fairway, if they don't stand a chance of actually chipping back up, like, as I said in the last one, you're creating that chip shot. When you put the fairway back here and you have people end up back here, you're creating that chip shot. And when you create this, this is an impossible shot for players. And it's a frustrating shot for most players. All right, and down to 16, and our third drivable part four. This one, let's say, it's probably my least favorite of all of them. It just seems a little bit too go-forable. Green is very easy for a drivable part four, other than this one little mound in the center. I think this green is a little too big compared to what we've seen before. Like, this green is pretty massive. Uh, taking a look at everything else around the hole, though, I mean, giant layup area. I mean, if I'm playing this IRL, this is where I'm laying up. I do like how the bunker here perfectly guards the layup area for anybody coming in. Yeah, nice little hole. Again, I was looking at this fairway. You see how this runs in at way too hard of an angle. 
just run this smoothly into this and then it looks a lot better as it rides around. All right, this was a good little shot. Nice, this could be good. Oh yeah, best shot of the day right there. Driving that green, putting for eagle. See if we can actually make a putt today. All right, this one for the eagle. Amazing shot. Get us back down to one over. One over for the day. Maybe we could finish even today. All right, I do like this bunker right here, how it is, the back end is raised up and is visually guarding this whole second portion of fairway up here. Yeah, I do like this tee shot. I will say it's a little too easy, just because a lot of times in video, for this being a video game, it's a lot easier. In real life, I think this is perfectly fine. But in terms of video game, it's just a little too easy to hit the fairway, I think. That was good stuff. All right, in terms of the green, I don't mind this one a lot. I do wish this fairway would have ran up through here so that if balls do catch this, they're going to catch the fairway and run down instead of just running into the rough. It's always been a pet peeve of mine. I don't like it when greens just run off into rough like this. I just don't think it's right. And I think a lot of times this happens just because it's easier to leave it like this and not actually come in here and fix this because this, on the edges of greens like this, it can be very, very annoying to get rid of these little red slopes all over the place. But I don't mind the green. It seems a little bit too basic. We're suffering from the, again, a little bit too flat around. You tried to add these mounds in to kind of give it some contour and some look to it, but I don't think it really worked super well. It's not bad, I just think it's a little bit too artificial looking, these mounts. We underpower that one just a bit. Alright, can we chip it in today, John? What do you think? Get us back to even? Oh, if I would have hit that a little harder. Finally get to see the little town up here, didn't notice that, that until just now. One thing I will say, if you're going to add stuff like this, make it visible to the players more. Like, I can see this. I think I could see it on this hole and the last hole, and that was it. If you're going to add something like this, make it visible on, say, three or four holes or five holes. That's a lot of times why, I say, right here, we're coming back on 18. We're coming back to the clubhouse, which is up here. Uh, that's why when you're building a course, you want to have the clubhouse. Usually, if you can, you want to have it visible on 1, you want to have it visible on 9, you want to have it visible on 10, and you want to have it visible on 18. It makes all the work you do, like that you go into to decorating all these little things, worth it. And it makes all these players, as they're playing the course, unless you're using the F10, F11 thing where you're flying around the course like this, uh, there's a lot of things you're just not going to see. Like even this town, there's a lot of details in this town I wouldn't see. Uh, I would raise this town down as well so you can actually see it from the tee boxes. I really can't see it that well from the tee boxes because it's so up here on the cliff. Uh, nice little bridge. Uh, I will say I don't like how you did it, uh, but I will say it's not bad because most players aren't going to pay enough attention to it because it's so far away, but I just don't like the castle with the different type on the top. I mean, it's just, you can tell it's not meant to be. <laughs> kind of funny looking, though. All right, in terms of our hole, though, I don't mind it. I wish this fairway would have been a little bit lower at the start. Very interesting in and outs here. Yeah, I don't mind it at all. I like it. I like how you've got the grass on the other side of the fence over there. This is kind of what I mean with filling that empty area. You've got empty areas in other holes, like here. Like, even just a fence running through here and then grass over here, it fills in all of this. Whereas right now, it's just a big, bland, empty area. Same with all of this up here. Big, bland, empty area, nothing on it. And you want to avoid that as much as you can for the players. You want to fill up the player's screen with something to look at. That's what makes the best courses in these video games, is if you have the entirety of the screen with something people can look at, people are most likely going to like the course, as long as it plays well, of course. Green, most basic green of the day, very uninteresting for an 18th hole green. 
Again, as I was just saying, stuff's just too flat and too bland around here. There's not really a lot going on. Uh, I do like the little rock outcropping you did again. These have been very nice all over the course. All right. Smack one on up there. That little fade coming in. Gonna help out. Hey, we might actually be able to finish even. We're going for eagle from here. We get down to one under even. Ah, uh, nope. Broke too much. All right, we finished with an even. Uh, in terms of the entire course, uh. Let's start with the greens. Greens are... I don't like the shapes, personally. I think they're a little bit too crazy, a little bit too all over the place. In terms of, like, the internal contours, as I said earlier, look at some videos or some uh, pictures or just greens map of popular courses and see how their greens kind of flow and how the green shapes work with the internal contours. They work there for a reason. There's a reason why a lot of those courses are where the pros play, is because they're built correctly, they're built nice. Uh, outside of everything out here, the greens are probably the thing that needs the most work. Uh, other than that, your bunkers, I do love the bunker shapes. I love the McKinsey-esque design of them, how you've got all these little outcroppings and little spots all over them. Uh, I will say, just work as I said earlier, work with having flat bottom bunkers and like 40 to 60 degree walls to kind of allow the balls to hit into that and then roll into that bottom spot. This makes the bunkers look a lot better overall. Uh, fairways, I didn't mind the fairways. Some of them were a little bit too open and some of them were too flat. Like, I think that was the big thing. You can have open fairways if you have a lot of movement in them. You can have flat fairways if they're tight, but when you have them both together, it makes them way too easy. It just creates these, the feeling of you're just hitting into an open field. Like you don't really have to worry too much about your shot. And the only reason you're ever gonna end up out of the fairways is if you red fast something or red slow something. Like you hit it terrible, very slow, very fast. Uh, tee boxes, I like the little decorations on the tee boxes. Tee boxes are something that you don't really have to worry too much about. Uh, it's definitely the thing you can put the least amount of effort to on your whole golf course. Um, I don't really have any complaints with them, honestly. Uh, me, personally, I like to do custom shapes, but I don't have any complaints about the tee boxes out here. Uh, cart paths. I wouldn't use the mulch as a secondary on the cart path. I just think regular cart path itself is nice. I do like it that you put cart path out here. It's something that takes a lot of time and effort to do. It's definitely not easy. Uh, other than that, your decorations were beautiful. Definitely your strongest suit. Your rock work is awesome. Uh, a lot of these little rivers and creeks and stuff that you did look beautiful. Uh, I think if you combine your rock work with a little bit better foliage work, like adding in trees in there, adding in little shrubs and bushes, adding in grasses, I think you could be one of the best. Like You have some great, great little starting starting work here. If you just start getting really, really good at adding in grasses, plants, and all that stuff to really make it look realistic, I think you could be some beautiful stuff. Uh, other than that, I don't really think I have anything else to say. Uh, it was a fun course for sure. Uh, I actually got even on it. I didn't think I was going to with this 38% uh, green regulation percentage, but... <laughs> But all right, guys, I think that's it for the video. Uh, I'm going to be trying to do one course a week for now. Uh, it's going to be very hard, but that's my goal. Uh, now, in terms of putting it out once a week, that may be different because I record these things and then I usually put them out the next week. So uh, other than that, thank you guys for watching. If you have any courses you want me to pay, put it in the description uh, or in the comments, I mean. It will be a little bit before I get to courses. I've got four more courses to do, so that's at least a month. Uh, other than that, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.